Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to my cybersecurity show. Today, guess what we're doing? That's right. You guessed it. More Port Swigger Web Security Academy walkthroughs. That's right. Today, guess what? We've jumped out of access control and we finally made it to authentication. Wonder what the lab's going to be today. Well, I think we're in for a little bit of a treat. Let's get over there, shall we? See what it is, lab. Today's lab is a username enumeration via different responses. Well, this ought to be fun. Let's see what they've got in store for us. I'm sure some sort of crazy tomfoolery. This lab is vulnerable to username enumeration and password brute force attacks. Oh, don't you love brute force and stuff? Except for the waiting. I like it when it goes fast. I don't like it when it takes me forever because then I start thinking, it's not here. It's not on this list. I'm not going to, it's going to take forever. I'm going to go through all this and it's not, you know what I mean? Uh, so I, it, it's a double-edged sword. No oh, brute force. It says it has an account with a predictable username and a password or a, I think and predictable password. I think both of those things are predictable, which can be found in the following word lists. So we've got candidate usernames and candidate passwords, which I brought up over here. Here they are. I don't know why that's happening. There we go. So lots of usernames, they look great. Lots of passwords, they look great. Now I've already like copied that and just saved them into text files right here. I've got passwords.txt, passwords.txt, and then cat usernames.txt, and there they all are. So I've got just two files with those lovely uh, lists in them. So now I've got my word lists. Let's jump back. Jump back, right? Uh, it says to solve the lab, enumerate a valid username. So that's step one. And then brute force this user's password, step two. Then step three, access their account page. Okay, shouldn't be too hard. I've already hit the access the lab button and here it is right here. First things first, you might be thinking to yourself, well, how are we gonna do this brute force? What tool are we going to use? This is uh, Port Swigger's Web Security Academy, Port Swigger. Port Swigger, the people that make a little tool called Burp Suite. We are gonna use Burp Suite to do the brute forcing. So if you've never done that before, again, like I've, like I've said in previous episodes, this is beginner friendly. Maybe you're like, duh, Daniel, we're gonna use Port Swigger, Burp Suite because it's Port Swigger. It's like, yes, but that's fine. It's it's fine. Settle down, right? But you maybe you've never... I remember the first time I was watching people do stuff in Burp Suite, and I was like, how what? How do you even know how to do that? I, what What's happening here? So I don't want to take it for granted that you know about Burp Suite or how to use it and some of the functions and features therein. So we're going to get to use a couple of those things today, okay? So let's get back to it. So the first thing I need to do is make sure that the proxying is happening. So I'm going to use my Foxy Proxy uh, plugin to do that. I will turn my proxy on. If you don't have that to turn on, it's as simple as go here and click uh, options. And then you can come in here and hit add and then create something. You can call it burp or whatever you like. Give it a description, tell it the proxy type. Uh, I'm sticking with HTTP, you give it the proxy address, which is 127.0.0.1. The port is going to be 8080 or 8080. You don't need a username or a password. I'll change the color on mine just because we, it's fun to do. And it's actually much more orange. So that, that kind of makes sense that it would be kind of orangish. Where's an orange? Give me an orange. There, that's yellow. There we go. Anyway, and then you hit save. Yay. And now I have one of these in the drop down. You notice it's called Burp. I just called mine Proxy On because I use more than Burp Suite. So if you're wondering, how does Daniel keep doing that with Foxy Proxy? Install Foxy Proxy, configure your proxy. Those are the default settings for uh, Burp Suite. So we are running. I don't need you anymore, Foxy Proxy, but thank you so, so much. But now that that's running, we going to go to the my account page. So I've clicked on my account link and this has taken us to the login. All right. Now you remember they have not given us a login, no login yet. They didn't say, Oh, you're, you know, Wiener Peter. That, that was not just to make sure. Let me, let me verify. Let me verify that you can, you can watch me and see the receipts, right? No creds have been given. So, 
But over here, we got that username and password right there, right? So how do we get to this? How do we make this happen? Well, if we run over to Burp Suite, you'll notice it's since my proxy has been turned on, it is logging all my web requests. And I don't, I don't have very many right now because I just turned it on. Here we go. We can see the login. We saw me go into my accounts. Uh, we got the Academy lab header, whatever this is, right? But this is where this is all going. All right, we jump back here. Since I don't have a username and password, I'm just gonna try one to see what it does. And I want to record that in Burp Suite, right? So Burp Suite is getting ready to record this post request, right? So I'm just gonna use junk, junk. So junk for the username, junk for the password. It makes it easy to find uh, when I'm like perusing through stuff. I hit log in. Probably gonna get prompted about, would you like me to save that? Because Bitwarden is running. But just that, no, I, I must have liked uh, disabled that. Uh, it does say invalid username. It's cool, as it should. It is an invalid username. Uh, at least I hope, I hope junk junk wasn't, wasn't the login for that. This would have been way too easy if I'd have just accidentally solved it. But now when we go over to Port Swigger's Bird Suite, I keep saying Port, because I got Port Swigger on the mind. It's just Burp Suite. Once we go to Burp Suite, we can look for that post request and we can see it right there. And from here, we can actually see the request that was made. And right on down here at the bottom, you can see there's the username and the password. Right there. And then we can see the response was a 200 over here. But as we know, that it's, it didn't you know, work. It's not a valid login. So I'm just going to right-click on this request and hit Send to Intruder. You can also hit Control-I if you like. Now this takes us to the Intruder tab, which is up here. Now I got all these things, intruder, repeater, sequencer, collaborator, decoder, comparer, so on and so forth. Lots of fun stuff inside of Burp Suite. And I click on intruder, and here is that request. This is where we're going to enumerate whatever username is correct that's in our word list. Okay, so how do we do that? I'll scroll all the way down to where I had my, oh, my request body, the, de the, the, the data that's going along with that. And I'm going to highlight, because it says right here, username equals junk. And then it says, and password equals junk. Hopefully you can see it. It's kind of small, but hopefully you can see that right there. I'm just going to highlight after username equals, I'm going to highlight the word junk. So just kind of make it all blue. And then over here, I'm going to go add. It's right over here. Hit add. And now you can see it puts some weird little double S looking things around that. That tells it that's my, my payload position. That's the thing I want to do. Now, the attack type right now is sniper. You've got a few other options here. And, oh, lo and behold, they give you what this does, right? So sniper, is, this attack uses a single set of payloads, one more, and one or more payload options, right? So you got a, you got a single payload, and then you can do some mangling of said payload as you wish. It places each payload in the first position and then payload in the second position and so on and so forth, right? So it does these things one at a time. you got battering ram, pitchfork, cluster bomb, which is uh, a lot of these are for multiple payload sets like pitchfork, but battering ram is a single payload. Iterates to the payload and places the same payload into all the defined payload positions at once. So, But what we're going to do right now is just sniper, which is the default. Next thing I need to do is go here to the payloads tab. This is where I got to upload my user uh, name word list. So we have the payload settings, which is a simple list. I hit the load button and I go to, it was under Port Swigger Labs, and I have a usernames.txt list. I'm going to hit open and that should propagate the list. Bada bing. Now we should be ready for username enumeration. Okay. So there's a start attack button right around here. It's kind of orange. Click start attack. This is where it tells us that this might run a little slowly. And honestly, I might just fire this off, can it get it going, and then we'll probably take a pause because, yes, it can take a while. I did not time how long it would take uh, the first time I did this, and who knows, it could take 10 minutes for all I know. Uh, depends on how many words are in the list. If it's just, it's like 50 or so, then it's not going to be too bad. But there it goes. It's firing off, and we've got the payload telling us, you know, what what it's using from the list. We see Carlos, we see root, we see admin, we see test. Looks like there's 101. We've already made it through almost 30 of them. It does start to slow down in the community edition 
as you get past like 40 or 50, it starts to really start to creep. And then after that, it really slows down. It doesn't want you going fast because it's just meant for short things and learning. <clears throat> if you needed to go super blazing speed, you're going to need that pro edition. But the other things we get here are status code. We get uh, error. We get timeout. We get the length. So basically like what was the size of the uh, response that came back? And it used all this. <clears throat> so 65, we're kind of just going to, that. this is where you start playing the waiting game. If this is in real life land, you, you, you just wait. You, you go get you a cup of coffee. Now, if you're running the Pro Edition or something like OWASP Zap, these things do not have brakes on them. They just go and they go super duper fast. I'm already at 81, so we'll probably just kind of talk our way through this. But I just want to kind of make that distinction that in the Community Edition, you are a little throttled when it comes to using this specific tool. It's one of the reasons they try to make you go for that Burp Suite Pro. Okay, so I'm already at 90. Let's just jump back. I'm not going to... I'm going to pause this because we're almost done. But what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at status codes and length. That's that's where I'm going to go almost invariably. Now, status code for us, that's really not going to be helpful. Unless we get like a redirect or something, that might be helpful. But we're getting 200, which lets us know, okay, everything I do works, even though none of it is correct, right? So that might not be the best. So length might be our best bet on determining which is the correct uh, username that we did and it did finish. So if I just click length and then I click it again, you notice I have one entry that has a different length than everything else. Every single request came back with a length of 3248, except for one, which was 3250. That means it was a different size. That means something was different about that request. And of course you can actually pull that up. It is at the bottom here. I can I'm going to grab that and I can see this request. There it was username ADS with the password junk. And if I hit the response tab, I can kind of look through here and see what it says. Uh, the, looking for something that makes me think, oh, look, my accounts, incorrect password, username. I'm looking for a lot of times these things will just kind of tell you something. But there was obviously something different in this. So I'm going to go with the ADS is our correct username. So we've already got step one in the book. So let me kind of pull this back down a little bit. <clears throat> All right, so I can close this. Where did I just, just close this window? I don't need it anymore. Because I'm pretty sure ADS is our username. No, I do not want to save that. All right, now that we have that, well, let's go back to the positions and let's change this because well, we know it's not junk. We know it's ADS, or we think it is. And now we're going to go after the... So I'm, I'm back in the intruder, right? I'm at the positions tab. I removed the, the uh, payload position markers from around the username area, and now I'm going to add them to the password area. So we changed the username from junk to ADS, and now I'm changing the password from junk. Well, I'm actually going to just highlight it and hit add, so that becomes my payload position go back to payloads, I'll clear that out, hit load again, and this time we'll go with passwords. Hit open, and hopefully that does the trick. Now, because some things get a little fun, right? You got this payload processing area, you can define rules uh, to perform various processing tasks on each payload before it is used. So we can actually add things to the end, right? We can say, hey, you know what? Let's um, let's do this. Let's go over here. Let's make a new list. I'm gonna nano special, special dash chars.txt. Because as you know, a lot of passwords will tell you, hey, you've gotta have like upper and lower. You've gotta have this, that, and the other, right? You gotta have a number. You gotta have a special character. So it might need uh, one of those things. So I'm going to throw that in there and I'm just going to kind of do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And we'll add, you know, the, the top row of special characters. So exclamation at, oh, exclamation. They all, they all need to be on their own line. Exclamation at hashtag dollar sign, percent sign, carrot, uh, ampersand star, that and oh, and that. 
I think that'll that that'll be good for right now. I might not need them at all. I'm just wondering. I'll do a control S to save, control X, and now we have three. We got that special char. So let's go back to this and we'll see. We'll let this run, see what happens. Maybe we need to go back to that payload processing, but we've got it ready if we need it. All right, now we have the payloads ready. All we need to do is hit start attack. And it's of course gonna give me the, um, hello, start attack. There it goes. It's like, it's, it's a little lagging. I think it fired up twice. There we go. Yes, no, discard. I, I think I hit it twice and that was the problem. Yeah, but it's still running. Bada bing. Well, well, well. I've already seen one that has a different length, right, of 185. I mean, that that's quick. I'm not seeing anything else. Now, always let it complete. Even though I see something that looks, I can go test that. And that's fine, right? We can go test that. But in real life, I will still let this complete just in case when I go test this, it still doesn't work. Maybe that's not the correct password. And of course, I can even look down here in the, in the uh, response. Let me pull that up. I've already got it. I can see username ADS password 1234. Look in response. And it did give me a found, it gave me like a, um, a 302 is a redirect. So it's redirected me to something else. Let's see what these other ones do. What did they get? Yeah, username, you notice it, it didn't give me the same thing. I feel like one, two, three, four is the password for ADS. We're at 87 out of 100. We'll let that continue, but we'll just jump back into the lab and we'll say, Username of ADS and a password of 1234, and then hit log in. And wait for it. Look at that. Congratulations. We have solved the lab. Well, we did some brute forcing. We learned a little bit about brute forcing. We had some fun with what we can do inside of Burp Suite as well. So hopefully, I mean, it was cool that we did not have to do any like uh, payload processing. We didn't have to add things, but that is a very common thing to do is to go, hey man, I need to I need to munge this a little bit. You've never heard that word before, munge, uh, change, mutate. I need to mutate this, turn it into something different. Yeah, this is a good base, but I want to work off of that. What can I do with it? Be forewarned, like I said before, it can get a little slow, but port swiggers, there I go again, put it. Burp Suite, just regular Burp Suite, even though, yes, it is made by Porp Swigger. My brain is just not allowing me to not say Port Swigger's Burp Suite. Just Burp Suite, the community edition has some has some throttling turned on. So there you go. Just be prepared for that. But there we go. We have solved this thing. That was kind of fun. It was a little longer than what we've normally gone through, but worth it, right? Because now you really understand about enumeration, like all that stuff you learned in that lab or uh, in the, the training that came before the lab, helped us to solve this lab. The enumeration, figuring out, well, yeah, there's a little something different going on here. And the same thing with the password to see, uh, give us a good idea that this was the actual correct thing. Okay, well, this is the end of this episode. More to come in the series because we just got started in authentication. So I, I'm sure we got another lab or two on the horizons. Until then, everyone, have a great day and... Keep hacking.